um, uh, I can work with you uh, and um, especially uh, uh, Professor Muzaffari uh, was very uh, uh, encouraging and uh, and I was thinking about um, how to do this outside of uh, Arab uh, cultural context and even in I'm not sure how familiar you are in uh, uh, with the uh, European um, Renaissance time, but it's uh, Toccata Tasso's Jerusalem delivery. It's sort of like, I don't know, it's like uh, anachronistic because uh, for centuries, uh, they have not paid much attention to Jerusalem. And especially in literature, uh, Jerusalem was not the, uh, a place to uh, immoralize or imagine. However, uh, Turkata Tasso, as a literary giant, he really trying to create uh, something different and uh, um, integrating different type of uh, genre, chivalric and pastoral genre, to create uh, this work. Let me briefly go over uh, some of the uh, uh, introductory information about the um, work. So Jerusalem Liberata, Liberata is the original title in Italian. It was published in 1581, although there was a, a sort of illegitimate, un, unauthorized uh, copy. It was available in 1579, but this is what uh, Author uh, authorized 1581. So and uh, it deals with um, the first crusade happened uh, during 1096 to 1099, led by uh, Gaffrey Bouillon. Uh, and um, this is a really long uh, work about 20. Uh, songs at uh, 20 cantos uh, and uh, uh, 15,000 uh, stanza Ex extensive uh, writing about uh, this first uh, crusade about the about the author first and uh, born in uh, 1544 and uh, died in 1595 uh, in Rome uh, and um He, he was under uh, uh, the place he was born is in Naples. It was, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, it's in uh, Sorrento, which was under the vice royalty of, uh, of Spain. And uh, so, in terms of uh, cultural and political uh, 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 movement of that time, was a counter reformation. And some of you know already. Reformation, uh, Protestant movement, uh, fueled by uh, uh, the invention of printing press and the Martin Luther. So now each uh, Christian can have uh, his or her, her own copy of a Bible, and therefore he or she can make uh, make um, their own uh, interpretation of the Bible. Which uh, threatened uh, the legitimacy and uh, authority of Catholic Church. So they uh, raised a, a, a campaign against such Protestant Reformation movement, and it was called Counter Reformation. And uh, he was born uh, to a, a noble family, and his father was uh, a, a poet as well, and Dasso uh, uh, grew up. But from time to time, the, the, the political uh, tumult of Dasso, Torcata uh, Dasso, the son, has to uh, separate from the parents uh, for some time. But overall, he received uh, a very um, sophisticated uh, uh, Catholic education. And the, the one of the reason why he wrote Jerusalem uh, delivered this text was that when he was 
child, he uh, used to go this uh, Benedictine uh, monastery at Gabadit at Diren, with the Pope uh, Urban II, who was the uh, supporter, uh, uh, strong supporter of the First cru uh, Crusade. Therefore, uh, there's some sort of uh, kind of reference uh, to his youth, uh, his uh, youthful memory, and he uh, wanted to um, show his respect to this Pope and his uh, project, uh, uh, First Crusade. A little bit more on historical historical context of uh, Counter Reformation. So, uh, Council of uh, Trent, uh, Trent uh, uh, to declare the Counter Reformation, and Church expressed that uh, um, there is a firm and an urgent need to uh, defend the Catholic Orthodoxy. Orthodoxy, especially uh, you know, against Parthians and um, new kind of religious zeal uh, from the uh, north of Europe, and one of the main uh, push was this uh, 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 index liberorum uh, prohibitorum, so the index of the prohibited books, and which. So if you look at it, like, well, what's the big deal about the prohibited books that uh, has existed for a long time? Yes, in some ways, but not like this, because since this was, you know, uh, such a strong influence uh, um, of uh, printing press, so they really uh, the church inquisition, Catholic Church inquisition, was really focused on printing books, and the burning books was a big thing during the, during this time. So in the spirit of the counter-reformation, the ideal of orthodoxy prevailed over the humanistic and the Renaissance ideals of rediscovery of classical work, word and the involved moderation of ambitions and for uh, frivolities. So some of you uh, probably know and all, uh, that Italian human, humanism uh, sort of started from Constantinople. And all those uh, uh, um, European um, translator who went to Constantinople, and some some of them tra uh, translated, uh, you know, classical uh, Greek and Roman text from Arabic to Latin again, and they're the, one of the uh, first proponents of uh, uh, Italian uh, hum humanist movements. However, during this uh, Counter Reformation, it was kind of their ideas put aside, and and uh, Greek and Roman uh, uh, hum humanism was sort of like uh, pushed aside, and really go back to the Christian origin, and they they were really uh, pounding on the uh, the orthodoxy of uh, Catholic Church. So, the Christian intellectual uh, Doc uh, Dasso. Uh, he, he firmly believed in this uh, uh, counter reformation movement, and so he felt responsible for the message uh, that can teach uh, um, a Catholic or orthodoxy. But at the same time, he was a poet and uh, he believed in creativity, so he kind of tried to balance uh, between Strike the balance between this uh, delectare to uh, give a pleasure and docere to teach. So, of course, uh, critics divide, uh, criticism is divided. Some uh, contemporary critics of his time uh, said that uh, Jerusalem delivered was more pleasure than and teaching. But despite all that, Dasso believed that he was actually, you know, uh, Making a good balance between these two. So, okay. And then um, what he did is uh, he actually submitted this work to really, really uh, distinguished figure uh, in uh, Italian um, uh, Counter Reformation movement, and especially Speroni, Speroni, a huge scholar uh, back then, and uh, other contemporaries, and then uh, archbishops. 
and they're, they're read and, and Gossel was really neurotic about how the, the, the evaluation of these uh, famous people looked like. And then some of them were not too positive. So he had to change uh, substantially, but uh, uh, despite that, he decided to publish uh, in 1581 and became masterpiece. So so-called the uh, like 16th century, the epitome of a European chivalry poem. And later in his life, he tried to uh, change uh, something from this uh, version. And he wrote uh, Jer Jerusalem Conquered, which they, now nowadays, when we talk about Jer Jerusalem, Tassel's Jer Jerusalem uh, uh, works, then they, Critics and, uh, and scholars favor the first work far more than the second work. And he spent his last days in Rome in the monastery of San Onofre of uh, Janiculum, where he had gone uh, at the call of Cardinal Aldo, uh, Aldo Brandini, and where he died on April 25th, 19, uh, I'm sorry, 1595, shortly before the scheduled date of his coronation as a poet by the Pope Clement VIII. But he was going to be, you know, uh, uh, celebrated as a Catholic Church official poet, but he died before his uh, um, nomination and celebration. And before I talk about the book, uh, just uh, some of the principal uh, characters of the Jerusalem delivered. Um, interestingly, um, you, know, you can see uh, the, the Christians of the First Crusade were these three men. Godfrey, he's a leader, but he, in, the, in this uh, book, he's, uh, in this text, he's not the protagonist, but he, but he, provides a platform of uh, uh, Christian uh, uh, battles and struggles. And Rinaldo, interestingly enough, uh, he, he is the founder of the House of Este, which is uh, uh, Dazzo worked for the Duke uh, of the House of Este. So uh, the Duke of the, the Este was Dazzo's patron for long, long time. So in some ways, you know, Tasso was doing, you know, uh, not only favor, but, you know, trying to uh, historicize and mythify the house of Esther. And then another um, more uh, frequently appeared this character, Dan Grady. He's a Christian, he's a prince, uh, prince of Galilee. And two Muslim uh, uh, female characters uh, uh, fell in love with them, and Corinda and Elmina. And interestingly enough, <clears throat> they are sort of like counterparts, the warriors. These are three uh, Christian warriors, and these are three Muslim warriors. Uh, there are many others, but these are the most uh, distinguished in the, in the text, and these are all women. So that's now you understand how the shibaric uh, uh, genre worked into this this uh, text. So Clorinda is a Muslim warrior uh, maiden uh, loved by Tancredi. Ermina, she's a uh, princess of Antioch, and she was in love with uh, Tancredi. Tancredi didn't not, but then at the end they you know uh, fell in love, and then uh, Ermina actually becomes uh, uh, betray his, her own people and had to run and flee uh, and then became sorceress and and because be she became sorceress uh, she could help uh, uh, Tancredi uh, when he was wounded and she uh, Elmina cuts her hair and then with her hair she does she makes a portion and then Give, give to uh, Tancredi and he get, he get miraculously healed. And another 
Here, Armida, uh, uh, she's a sorceress and she's very strong. So, very interesting. The Christians, mostly men, and Muslims, mostly women. And I, until I <coughs> studied this, I didn't know um, there are that many uh, Muslim women warriors uh, in, in Christian history. We don't see that many women heroes except uh, uh, John John Dark, right? John Dark, right? Or very few uh, women uh, warrior in, in in Christian history. Even I think Bible, we don't see any kind of woman uh, soldier or general in Bible. But um, I guess right uh, in the time of Muhammad in in uh, Arab world uh, in, in seventh century, uh, already there were many, many uh, women warriors who helped uh, Muhammad. And then later, uh, and more uh, each period, there, there are very distinguished uh, women warriors who were princesses or, or uh, head of uh, tribes, or, or even until 19th century, if an Afghan warrior woman uh, uh, or very uh, distinguished. So it's, uh, I'm glad to have this opportunity to study about this and, and learn much about uh, the strong uh, Arab uh, women in the his history. And these two are secondary uh, characters. Uh, they're uh, Christian knights, and actually they they witness uh, Rinaldo. Uh, and Ar Armin, Armin, uh, Armin, Armida, they were uh, embracing and uh, in love, but then they got upset and they, they this is interesting, very Baroque uh, things, offering Rinaldo a mirror diamond so that Rinaldo can see himself, uh, he's way too defeminated and uh, amorous, uh, and then he realized, no, I'm Christian, so she, he decided to abandon uh, Armida, who's Really uh, devastated uh, uh, because of that, and but despite all that, and Rinaldo go back to the war, and he wins the war. And so the uh, uh, pictorial uh, portray of these uh, uh, figures, and this uh, pretty much contemporary. This uh, I think this is a 17th century, 1620s, 1630s. All these paintings. In this case, uh, uh, Armida, she she uh, she discovers uh, Rinaldo sleeping, and this is she falls in love at the same time. But at the same time, she knows that he's an enemy. He's trying to kill her, and this is a Cupid trying to hold back. So you know, Cupid for love. So you know, all this uh, kind of uh, showing uh, you know how the hate or love go together in, in the end, she falling in love with uh, uh, Rinaldo. And another one, Tancredi, uh, she, uh, Clorinda tried to uh, chase after Tancredi and didn't work. And then at the end, she, she converts to uh, Christianity. And then this Tancredi trying to baptize uh, Clorinda to save us all. And uh, another one, uh, Ermina, the princess, she's uh, helping Tancredi when he was uh, hurt. So she's cutting her hair to cure his wound. This all from uh, six, early 1700. So book was published in 1581, uh, second half of the six, uh, 16th century. So, so this is a, well, for 40 or 50 years later, this, uh, the popularity of work maintained and then, you know, more uh, 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 pictorial representation of the work. Well, just basic plot, I just mentioned this, uh, no, uh, historic leader, the, the actual, uh, this this person existed, Godfrey uh, Bouillon who had reached the six years of the first great crusade at, at the head of the army, awaits the end of the winter in Lebanon when the arch archangel Gabriel appears to him and invites him to take command of the army 
and carry out its final attack on Jerusalem. So all stories of starting from uh, this, this is the first uh, uh, book of the um, Jerusalem Delivered, and then all the stories kind of ramifies ramification of these beginnings. So a little bit of uh, digital, uh, you know, uh, uh, text uh, analysis. So the word, uh, there are frequent words, is great. I mean, in Shivari's novel, and so, sounds, that sounds like that's a uh, most popular adjective they use. And then love, you know, uh, pastoral novel and Shivari's novel, the love and the nights. And then of course, fight and hearts. So, so you can see just looking at you know uh, the macroscopic point of view, these, you can understand these this text really uh, contains the uh, mixed uh, two major literary genres: the chivalric novels and pastoral novels. And then, word Jerusalem appears uh, in eight stanzas and total ten times. So the book two. The uh, book has uh, the the text has uh, twenty books, so just these. And then I just want to highlight. Uh, if I highlight the uh, two stanzas, uh, just the etymology of Jerusalem. Some of you probably know as uh, in Greek as a Jerusalem, uh, and it came from uh, Hebrew, and then he, in Hebrew it means uh, first part is a. Uh, I guess uh, Jeru, this means uh, the throw, throw, and then this is Shalom, uh, so peace, so foundation of peace. So uh, the, one of the two uh, important standards of uh, Jerusalem is the book three, standard 55. And this is uh, all the soldiers going in, trying to get to Jerusalem and you know, the morning comes and then you see this sort of like a theatrical opening of, uh, of the scene of a uh, 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 view or perspective of vista of uh, Jerusalem and here. So the uh, soldiers can kneel down and just pray and they recognize. It's not, it's not paradise, but like sort of like holy shrine, whole city as a holy shrine they see, so Jerusalem. Behold appears inside Jerusalem. They view, they see, they spy Jerusalem with a merry noise. They greet with a joyful shouts and acclamation, acclamation streets. So the imagination of Jerusalem, uh, um, you don't see that much in this textbook because uh, Tasso has never uh, had never traveled uh, to Jerusalem, but uh, all this uh, you know, description and imagination and. So the, the second uh, stanza uh, that deals with uh, uh, Jerusalem much is this. So it uses a, a Greek word, the Jerusalem cities on the two two hills of height unlike and turn side to side, the space between between a gentle valley fields. From mount to mount expands fair and wide. These three sites surely in bars with the cracks and hills. The rest is easy, scan to rise a speed. But mighty bulwark, bulwarks fence that plain upon. So art helps nature, nature strengthens art. Uh, pretty nice, this last part, very uh, uh, sort of like Baroque and uh, 16th, 17th century uh, uh, concept. But now you can imagine the whole uh, sort of uh, Jerusalem is three sides of uh, the mount, different mountains covered uh, Jerusalem. So that's one part. So it's a perfect fort uh, protection. So that's how um, that's what you describe. So <clears throat> in, I have only a few minutes. So just conclusion is, uh, you know, uh, Tasso's work is considered the uh, best and the last canon of a Shivari epic genre in Western uh, Europe. And uh, 
uh, in the spirit of counter reformation, the Catholic Orthodoxy prevailed over humanistic and the Renaissance passions for the rediscovery of classical world. And in response to such a religious doctrine, Tasso composed the work to defend Christian faith from external threats, uh, Turkish Ottoman Empire or uh, encroaching to uh, Europe and uh, the internal threats, the Lutheran Protestant Reformation. So Tasso metaphorized uh, Jerusalem as a holy shrine that was forgotten and lost in the memory of Christians. And thus he insisted that physical and geographical Jerusalem should be re uh, uh, recovered and liberated from Muslims and from the city itself it is uh, for city itself is holy and precious and for its spiritual and metaphoric significance is immeasurable. Okay, thank you very much. I'll take any questions after. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for your.